Hi, it's Will. This video will show you how to run CMake on the Steinberg VST3 SDK in order to install a sample project which will give you access to uh, the sample plugin code and, and uh, compile that code into VST plugins. So I'm going to do this in Windows here and in Mac OS over on this side. And I've got the VST SDK installed. I, uh, you unzip it and you get a root folder here. You just drop that anywhere that you want. I've got it inside of my, um, my documents folder. Inside of that are some subfolders and a couple of helper files. I'm going to run this batch file right now. It ran very, very quickly over here. That installed the VST2 SDK stuff and the VST3 SDK. You need that if you want to be able to use the VST2 wrapper to create VST2 and VST3 plugins uh, in the SDK. So now that I've done that, I'll open up the folder here, and this is what it's going to look like uh, when you get it from Steinberg. You will need to make a subfolder in here, and I'm going to go ahead and create that right now, and I'm going to name it Build. You can actually name this folder whatever you want. I'm using Build because this is what the VST3 SDK and help forum reference. Uh, of course, that folder is empty inside, but this folder is going to be the location for our final Visual Studio project in Windows. Over here, uh, I've got the command prompt open, and I've already navigated deep down into the set of subfolders into the VST3 SDK subfolder here. And now that I've created a build subfolder, I can navigate into that which I've done here. So I will run CMake from inside of this build subfolder. The command for this will be in the, uh, in the comment section for the video here. So I'll run that. This is going to create the Visual Studio project and it's gonna create some extra subdirectories inside of our build folder that we made. It's just finished, and this is the solution file for Visual Studio 2015. You can also do this for Visual Studio 2017. You'll have to change the CMake command prompt, uh, the command a little bit here. So I'll open the Visual Studio project up. This project will contain everything needed to build the base libraries, the VST GUI libraries, as well as all of the sample plugins. So here are all of the components inside of this giant Visual Studio solution. Each of the plugins is here, and each of these has its own set of source code. Uh, there's no need to even look at any of this stuff. CMake has already set up the solution for us. I'll click on the uh, CMake all build predefined uh, master project, and then from the build menu here, choose rebuild all build, and that will uh, build everything here. Now this is going to take some time. It's going to build all the base class stuff, the libraries, the validator, and editor host, and then it will begin building, building each of the plugins one by one. As it builds each of these plugins, it will run them through the validator, and we'll be able to look at the validator output a little bit later in the window here. So while this is churning along, I'm going to switch over to the Mac OS side and do the same thing here. Here is the VST root folder. There is a terminal script file, and I've navigated to the VST SDK root folder in terminal. I'm going to drag this script over to terminal and then hit return, and that will install the VST2 stuff in the VST3 SDK here. I've opened this folder up, and it looks the same as the Windows side. I will need to create a new subfolder named build, and we will run CMake out of the build folder here. I'll need to navigate to that in terminal. So there's the ST3 SDK, and now I'll go into the build subfolder and then run CMake. And this will uh, likewise create some subfolders over in our build directory, and it will also create a uh, one single Xcode project which will contain all of the sub projects or all of the sub plugins from the SDK. So that's finished, and here is the Xcode project. I will launch that. I'm running Xcode 8.3. So let me pull this up into the video window where you can see it. Here, if I click on the project, I can see all of the targets here. So I have a very similar setup. All of the base code, 
the VST GUI libraries, and then each individual plugin is its own uh, target within the master Xcode project here. All build is already selected as my current scheme, so I'll just hit Command B and that will start uh, the build for Xcode. So let's hop back over to the Visual Studio site in Windows here. We can see that we are still building away and it looks like we're currently working on the MDA plugins. Those are this project which contains uh, a whole slew of sub plugins. After this is done, all of those MDA plugins will get validated through the validator. Now while we're talking about this, I'd like to show you where that post build event uh, is located in your Visual Studio solution, or I'm sorry, your Visual Studio sub projects here. So I can click on any of these plugin projects. I'm going to use a gain and open the properties for that. Inside of here, we can open the build events tab and go to the post build event. And you'll see that on the command line, it says set local and then CD users, blah, 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 and the rest of the code for that build event. This is the validator build event. If you want to remove this, then you can grab all this code and just delete it. That will remove the validator from the post build event. Um, you probably shouldn't do this because you really do need to run the validator to make sure that it's, that it's going to, uh, to work. But if you're having issues with it, then that's always an option. You can always uh, grab this, cut it, uh, save it in a text file, and then paste it back in later if you like. Or you can always rerun CMake, and that will regenerate this. And we'll go ahead and do that. So uh, Visual Studio is still turning along here. Let's go back over on the Mac side and check and see if it's done yet. And it is just finishing up. Uh, there it goes. It just succeeded. Let's take a look at those VST plugins. You can see that our build uh, subfolder has gotten populated with more subfolders. One of those is called VST3, and inside of the debug folder, there are all of our VST3 plugins for Mac OS. So that's where these are all located. I'll pop back over, and we can now see the validator being run. It looks like this is being run on the MDA plugins and the rest of the plugins that were built here. And uh, the way that it works with the post build event is if the validator fails, then the VST3 plugin that was, that was compiled will be deleted. So that's also another reason that you may want to um, sort of bypass the validator step here. Uh, just a word of warning, if you do bypass the validator step in order to get your VST3 plugin, it's a, there's a very, very good chance that VST3 plugin is going to crash whatever host you run it in. So that's just a, just a warning, uh, but you are, always are welcome to do that. To go over to the Mac OS side, if we look in, uh, in the Xcode project and grab any of these, these plugins, uh, sub-targets, and look at the build phases, you can see that the very last phase here is a post-build rule. That's where validator is being run on the Mac OS side. And you can, you can bypass it if you want by checking run script only when installing. Uh, again, I don't recommend bypassing the validator. Uh, it's really important, and it's really cool that Steinberg has included that uh, and has, has already got it, the CMake file set up to run the validator. So that's um, really, really, really good for us. Over here on the, the Windows side, we can see that we are still running, and it looks like we're running looks like our very final... Um, validators on the projects there. Now, while we're talking about this, I'm going to minimize Visual Studio here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and take a look. If you look in the VST3 SDK, you'll see that there is a folder named CMake. Now, this folder was installed when you created the VST SDK. This was not created when you ran CMake. Uh, inside of this, are a set of modules, and each of these CMake modules does some part of the CMake operation. These are actually text files. You can open them and look at the CMake script code in any text editor. But it's important to understand that if you're using RackFX to create VST3 plugin projects and then you're running CMake on, uh, on those, those projects, the CMake files are going to reference some of these modules inside of the SDK. 
So uh, a lot of the work uh, is actually done inside of here, and the CMake files that come with the VS with com that come with your Rack Effects projects are actually very very simple. So um, a big part of the work is being done inside of there. Let's go back here. We can now see that the uh, the VST final validation has been run on the very last plugin. And likewise, those are located inside of the build folder in the VST3. I was in the debug uh, configuration in Visual Studio, so they are here. And all of the VST3 plugins are right here uh, with the .VST3 uh, suffix. So that uh, is our video here that will show you how to run CMake and set up the VST sample code and run and create those sample projects. I will see you in the next video.